Good morning. I'm Rev Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for 40 years. I'm going through the lessons this year, asking Jesus to clarify for me, as I have done in the past. And then I write from that clarity, and that's uh, what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. Let's remember that Jesus asked us to read the um, uh, the special theme for these lessons before we do them. And um, uh, this time it is, what is the world? So you may want to do that as well. Lesson 246 is where we're working today. To love my father is to love his son. <clears throat> Let me not think that I can find the way to God if I have hatred in my heart. Let me not try to hurt God's son and think I can know his father or myself. Let me not fail to recognize myself and still believe that my awareness can contain my father or my mind can conceive of all the love father has for me and all the love which I return to him. I will accept the way you choose for me to come to you, my Father, for in that will I succeed, because it is your will. And I would recognize that what you will is what I will as well, and only that. And so I choose to love your Son. Amen. So let me not think I can find the way to God if I have hatred in my heart. This lesson contains three uncompromising statements, and I like that. I like knowing exactly what works and what does not. I take these very seriously. This first one seems self-evident, but there was a time I didn't realize it was true. Even after I began the study of the Course, I made exceptions for those I thought were too bad to forgive, such as people who abuse children. I even made exceptions for people who treated me badly. I remember thinking at one time that I forgave so many people, this one shouldn't matter. <laughs> All of that kind of thinking was an error. If I hate anyone, I cannot find my way to God. I finally started thinking of it this way. If God is love, then I cannot bring hate into him without changing him because then he would be both love and hate and of course that's not possible. That logic helped me to realize that all must be forgiven and seen as the love they are. Later I began to understand forgiveness and realized that I have been forgiving to destroy in believing that someone was guilty and then trying to forgive the guilt. I learned that I forgave because there was nothing to forgive. I forgave the thoughts in my mind about the other, and the healing of my mind allowed me to see them with Christ's vision. Now I hate no one, because to do so would be to keep me in hell, and all of us in hell. Let me not try to hurt God's Son and think I can know His Father or myself. This is similar to the first. I used to think that if someone hurt me, then I was justified in hurting them. Then I learned through A Course in Miracles that this is not so, that attack is never justified. At first, this thought felt like a sacrifice and made me think I was a victim to them. As I continued studying and practicing the Course, I realized I was wrong about that. As I forgave and released my beliefs, I became happier and more peaceful. I realized that I valued peace and happiness a lot more than being right and feeling justified. Then it became easy and natural to choose love rather than defense. The next step in this was to realize how often I hurt others in more subtle or even casual ways. That took a strong, that took a strong desire never to cause harm so that I would be willing to become aware of those thoughts and desires. 
Sometimes it never reached the level of saying or doing anything, but was more of an attitude or even just thoughts in my mind. For instance, there was someone I didn't enjoy being around. When I came into contact with her, I always wished I hadn't. No doubt she could feel a lack of welcome from me even when I didn't express it. When I worked in sales, there was a competitor that I judged as unscrupulous and a customer I thought of as two-faced and I justified, I felt justified in warning other people about them. This is causing harm and I eventually learned that the cost of doing this was too high. And as I continued to, the, to do the healing work in my own mind, I reached a level of real love. Then it wasn't just about hurting someone. It was about, or just about not hurting someone. It was about loving them. This is when I realized that we can know ourself even while still in the illusory story. Know our true self. Let me not fail to recognize myself and still believe that my awareness can contain my father or my mind conceive of all the love my father has for me and all the love which I return to him. This is the goal, the reason we're studying and practicing the course. When I first began this study, I thought it was so that I could have a happier dream. And this does happen, no doubt. But now I understand that my true purpose is to wake up from the dream and to realize who I am. It is to know my Father and to know the love He has for me. As Jesus says, my awareness cannot contain this knowing unless I first recognize myself. I know now what I am not. I am not this body, nor am I in this body. I never have been. There's nothing outside God, and I am in God, so I'm not actually living this story. I know this. But I am still learning to let go of the idea of a personal self. I still reference the world to a personal self, so there is much left to undo. This is very exciting to think of, and also a little unnerving. It's been a long time since I knew myself as I am, <clears throat> and I have believed many untrue things. I have become comfortable in the limited awareness of myself as a human being, even though that awareness involves a lot of suffering and, of course, death. I have to wonder what it is I think about being a d divine and eternal being that there is to avoid or even to fear. But each day I accept more healing and my mind opens a bit more to the certainty that this is what I want and what I will have. I will accept the way you choose for me to come to you, my Father, for in that I will succeed, because it is your will. And I would recognize that what you will is what I will as well, and only that. And so I choose to love your Son. Amen. There is only one way to love God, and that is through... There's Sorry, let me read that again. There is only one way to God, and that is through love. I accept this, and I strive to release any thought that is not love. I long for God, so I long for oneness with all God created. The way to do this is to be vigilant for anything that does not reflect God's love and release it as quickly and gladly. This appears as fear and guilt, and it doesn't matter where I see it, within or without since without is simply a reflection of what is within. And so I will accept the will of God and know that it is my will as well. I will accept that I am God the Son and will do my part to restore the Sonship to its oneness. I do this by choosing to love God's Son, all of it, without exception. <clears throat> Regina's Tips on What is the World the world's purpose for you is the one that you give it. If you give the world the purpose of healing the mind and awakening to truth, that is the purpose of everything you perceive. 
However, if you do not consciously and steadfastly choose this purpose, the world by default will continue to be a place of deception with the purpose of feeding the thought of separation. What purpose do you choose? Is there anything, anyone, any circumstance, any desire that you exclude from the purpose of healing or awakening? If there's anything that you exclude from the purpose of healing or awakening that remains an area of deception for you, that is where your ego feeds itself. So my thoughts, I use everything in my life for the purpose of awakening. There are still things I see as important um, in, of themselves, for instance, special relationships. But as this shows up in some way, I turn it around as quickly as I can. For a long time, a past behavior would haunt my memory and I felt guilty. But I saw this as another opportunity to heal the mind and I released that guilt as quickly as possible. I absolutely believe that my life is not about my life, that I came here with a higher purpose and I am determined to accomplish that purpose. So Regina's tips on the lesson. There are some teachings we need to accept if healing the mind or awakening the truth are important to us. One, the ego, I thought, will not lead us to awakening. Its purpose is the opposite of truth. Two, the ego is a cause of all suffering. As long as we continue to accept the I thoughts thinking as I our thinking, we will continue to suffer, to be unhappy, worry, have grievances, etc. Likewise, as long as we continue to accept the I thoughts thinking as our thinking, we will continue to contribute to the world's suffering in all its forms. The only way to be in the world without following the I thoughts thinking is to surrender to wisdom that is not part of the I thoughts thinking. That is the purpose of surrender. You can know the I thoughts thinking by its will. Outward seeking, thinking, sorry, outward seeking is a will of the I thought. Judgment is a mechanism of the ego's seeking loop. Outward seeking loop. Judgment is a mechanism of the ego's outward seeking loop. It judges to determine good and bad, right and wrong, desired and undesired, etc. And then it seeks to obtain or achieve what it determines is good for it and to avoid or destroy what it determines is bad for it. Please take a few minutes to contemplate some things or circumstances that your mind judges as good or desired. Notice the thinking that spins in your mind about obtaining or achieving those things or circumstances. Next, take a few minutes to contemplate some things or circumstances that your mind judges as bad or undesirable. Notice the thinking that spins in your mind about avoiding or ending those things or circumstances. You have just observed judgment and outward seeking in the I thoughts thought system. Love is the nature of the true self. Love is open allowance and acceptance of all things as they are. Love does not seek outwardly for happiness or safety. Love is fulfilled within itself. Love is eternal, eternal and invulnerable. It is not threatened by the temporary circumstances that come and go in perception. So my thoughts. This morning, as I read Regina's thoughts on the lesson, I thought that I don't do a lot of outward seeking and I don't have a lot of I thoughts. Then I stopped writing about this for a few minutes as I got some breakfast. Suddenly, I noticed my thoughts. I was thinking about what I like to eat and what I need to happen next. I saw that I was not happy with the specific situation 
and spent some time thinking about what I thought should happen. <laughs> My mind was full of I thoughts and they were all directed outward. I see that I need to be more vigilant for this kind of thinking. What I did this morning was to realize that I don't know what should be happening. I don't intend to spend any more of this life trying to manipulate outside circumstances to my liking. Instead, I let that go, and when I did, my mind was peaceful. It also reminded me of a novel I'm reading by Tony Hillerman. In fact, in it, the main character, Joe Leaphorn, was commenting on a ceremony being performed by a neighboring tribe to bring rain to the reservation. He said that the Navajo people don't understand the idea of bringing nature in line with their needs. Instead, they seek to come into harmony with nature. So not his exact words. Instead of trying to manipulate the world, I changed my mind to be peaceful in the world. When I was still working, I needed to heal some relationships in which there was hatred. Oh my, I cannot find my way to God if I have hatred in my heart. Jesus said it in another way in the text. He said that I cannot approach God if I attack his son. I know that I know this and I live by it most of the time. I mentioned that a few days ago I have had some distress dealing with work issues. I have had the opportunity to see that there are still ego separation thoughts in my mind that attract me. Of course, this happened when I was still working. There are two people at work that I hate. Gosh, I don't like saying that. And I want to soften the blow telling you that they are getting on my nerves, that they're difficult, that I love them, but they trigger me. But if what I feel is not love, then it must be hate. And if it is not love, it must be fear. So I see that I hate them and I understand that my hate is an outward expression of fear. I've been talking to Jesus about this for several days and he has helped me a great deal. He's shown me that the he has shown me the fear and he's helped me to see the beliefs behind the thoughts. He helped me to go through the situation using Lesson 325 so I could see why I wanted this situation in my life. He helped me to see that it is spilling over in, in, into other parts of my life. I cannot hate in a box. If I hate, it affects everything. He showed me that hate is a filter and that if I look through that filter to see the world, then the world will look hateful. Yesterday I had hateful thoughts about them and I stopped myself immediately. I realized I was feeling attacked and wanted to defend myself by returning the attack. I was having one of those silly inner arguments with one of the people involved. First, I stopped the ego chatter and sat in stillness for a moment. Then I looked at what I was doing. I realized that when I asked the ego to fix this problem, the inner argument I was winning, <laughs> the Holy Spirit had to step back because I was no longer asking for his help. Now, without his light, I was in the dark with the ego and hated how I felt. So I invited the Holy Spirit back and asked him to enlighten the situation for me. I was reminded that this is, that in my defenselessness, my safety lies. Of course. Well, the ego was not sitting still for that and insisted that I really needed to do something about the situation and flooded my mind with ideas on how to do that. I stopped the chatter again and I turned back to Holy Spirit. The thought came to me, Jesus says, my safety lies in defenselessness. This doesn't make sense to the ego, but seriously, who am I going to believe? Jesus or the ego? I felt all the animosity and all the fear melt away. 
Good job, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me in this lesson. And if you found it helpful, then please like it. And if uh, you haven't yet, please subscribe. And thanks to all of you who have subscribed and everyone who comes here to share the lesson with me daily. I love that we're help, helping and supporting each other in this way. And I will be back later with another lesson.